Hey, Nicole. Hey, everyone. How is everybody today? My name's Nicole, and this is Amy feeding Lincoln, our male sea otter. Welcome to the Oregon Zoo Stellar Cove area, where we are going to be spending the next couple minutes answering all your questions about sea otters. Um, just a couple things before we start. We do have a donate button on our website, the Oregon Zoo website, and we would love it if you had um, any financial assistance you could offer us right now, that would be fantastic and really appreciated. And after the uh, Sea Otter Facebook Live is done, there should be a link that shows up that shows some fun activities to do. And we always like to see what you guys come up with, so please share it with the zoo um, so we can see what you're doing. All right. So can you tell us a little bit about Lincoln's story, Nicole? How did he end up living here at the zoo? Okay, so Lincoln um, is just over two years old, and he was actually wild-born off the coast of Central California. The uh, southern sea otter range is pretty much in the central part of California, and for some reason he got separated from his mother at a pretty young age. So um, there were some attempts to find his mom, but that um, they didn't have any luck, so he was brought into the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And he was only like six or seven days old, I think, when he was found. And we have had him here at the zoo. Um, he was pretty little when he came here because he was still in the nursery. And a lot of you guys have probably seen him grow up here. So we've had him here for between two and almost two and a half years. So Jennifer's asking, do sea otters have a good sense of smell? Do sea otters have a good sense of smell? So they have a pretty big nose. If you notice Lincoln's nose, they can smell. Obviously, they can't smell underwater. Um, they're, they're probably their sense of touch is really, really good, as, and they use their whiskers a lot in dark, murky water. We, they actually have done some research studies to um, test a sea otter sense of smell. And if I remember, it's, it's kind of average. It's not anything like a dog. But when we offer these guys um, different toys with scents on them or a new scent, they definitely pick up on it and they definitely smell it. So they, they, do, they can smell fairly well. Lewis is asking, do they eat anything other than seafood? Do they eat? Uh, uh, they will eat some kelp, which is technically not an animal. But they do like to eat like bull kelp. Um, and other than that, no, I think they pretty much stick to the seafood diet. So Brooke is asking, uh, what all do they eat? What, what all do about? they eat? Yeah. So um, they eat a fish t called capelin. This is what we feed them here at the zoo. A marine fish called capelin, shrimp, clam. We give them clam out of the shell as well as in the shell, so they have to crack the shell open. They get crab, sea urchins, mussels, and squid. I don't know if there's any squid left in that bucket, but they're really big. Takes them a while to eat it. Out in the wild, they'll eat those similar items, um, but they also eat like gooey ducks and moon snails and um, pretty much other types of crustaceans and invertebrates you'd find in the ocean. So Carolyn is asking if sea otters have any predators. Do sea otters have predators? So right now, great white shark attacks seem to have increased over the last couple decades with sea otters. They don't eat them, but they probably mistakenly th think they're a seal or a sea lion. Unfortunately, once they get bit, that bite can be lethal, um, but they don't get consumed by the shark. Um, and really, these guys are kind of a top predator in their ecosystem, so they don't have anything else that typically goes after them and eats them like a, a whale or anything. 
So I think it was Kyle that asked, um, at one point, sea otters were in a lot of trouble. They almost went extinct. Can you tell us a little bit about how that happened and yes. how they bounced back? Great question, Kyle. So sea otters were hunted till near extinction in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And in fact, they are extinct off the Oregon coast. Um, there were northern and southern sea otters left in Alaska and off the coast of California. And they, the California sea otters, or the southern sea otters, have slowly made a comeback. Their numbers are about 32 to 3,300 in their population. The northern sea otters have made a really great comeback, and they've actually um, done some reintroductions along the west coast, like in Washington and British Columbia, and they've done really well. So even though their numbers are up, the environment that they live in, though, is still, you know, it has its challenges because of the pollution that gets in the water, and then they eat a lot of, um, must, you know, filter feeders and little scavenger-type animals. So if those animals are eating um, toxic things and they're at the top of the food chain, then they can, that stuff, the toxins can accumulate in their bodies. So it's important that we take care of the, the marine system they're in as well to keep their populations healthy. Liam's asking, how long can they stay underwater? How long can they stay underwater? So they can dive down to about 2,500 feet to find prey. Um, and they can stay down for several minutes, maybe up to five minutes. Our otters tend not to stay down that long. But, um, you know, they'll be underwater for a good minute sometimes here at the zoo. Um, Jack is asking, is Lincoln friends with sushi? Oh, is Lincoln friends with sushi? So, sushi, our youngest female, and Lincoln are buddies. They get along really well. They kind of wrestle like brother and sister. And actually, they both get along really well with Juno, our older female, too. They, they are often seen hanging out as a group. Wiley is asking, um, does Lincoln have a favorite toy? Does Lincoln have a favorite toy? I don't know, what do you think? It's probably a cup, a toddler cup, which it's not out here in the pool right now, but for some reason, Lincoln likes to put this little toddler cup on his nose, and when it's floating around in the pool, he tends to be attracted to that toy more often than the other one, so, and it's fun to bang around. Avery is asking if they ever go on land. Avery, good question. So yeah, I think um, Amy can show you how they actually move on land. Lincoln's very good. He's going to bring his toy up. So you can see they have rear flippers and little front paws. They're very good on land. They can actually move around really well. Um, they're really fast on land, believe it or not. And they, they prefer to stay in the water. They really don't need to come out on land, but they absolutely, if they come out on land, can get around and they're very mobile. So we had a question about whether they're related to river otters. Can you tell us uh, about that and what's the difference between a sea otter and a river otter? Sure. So they are related to uh, river otters. These guys are mustelids like river otters. Um, river otters are about one third the size and they, even though they live in the water, they do tend to come out on land more. And so river otters, if they had, um, if they had cubs they would basically have them in a den, whereas these guys are going to take care of their young in the water pretty much 100% of the time. Their diets are slightly different. Um, sea otters, as we had mentioned earlier, do eat seafood. And river otters are going to eat more. They'll eat, um, you know, they'll eat like birds and like crayfish and things that you might find more along a river, stream, or wetlands area. And then River otters, when they're swimming in the water, they tend not to swim belly up like a sea otter. Sea otters, as you can see, feed off their chest, their, their necks or their bellies are up, whereas river otters will swim more like a, you would see a dog swimming with their back up. Kelsey's asking if he has a favorite snack. A favorite snack. Lincoln is a two and a half year old male, so everything he eats is his favorite. <laughs> he eats a lot of food. And um, he pretty much, wait, we did offer him a piece of tuna last week, and he despised that. He did not want that. But everything else he just loves. Um, Stacy is asking, Nicole, how did you get into this work? How did you come to end up working with sea otters? Great question. So I kind of knew at an early age that I wanted to work with marine mammals, so I geared my 
educational focus on that. Um, a lot of keepers here have de college degrees in biology or zoology, animal husbandry. Um, psychology helps too because you learn about um, ethology and learning and behavior. It's really important to be able to volunteer or intern as well so you can get that work experience for you. And that's what I did. I started off as a volunteer actually at the Oregon Coast Aquarium when I was in college. And that turned into an internship. It is a very competitive field. And probably my biggest um, advice would be be willing to move anywhere and do any type of work. Um, and just because you think you might want to work with sea otters, if you have an opportunity to work with maybe lemurs or fish, take that opportunity because you might find yourself falling in love with an animal that you didn't originally think you had a desire to work with. So um, we work with the red pandas and the tigers too, and they're very enjoyable as well. So we'll take one last question from Zach. Wants to know how long do sea otters sleep and where do they sleep? Oh, great question. So um, our sea otters will sleep in the water um, with their bellies up. They'll also haul out and sleep on deck. We actually have these little swings hanging from cables in all of our pools and we've seen them curl up and sleep in those too. They can sleep anywhere from a couple minutes to several hours. So it kind of varies depending on the time of day. And oftentimes when sea otters sleep, you might see if you see a large group of sea otters, they're called a raft and they connect paws and they kind of float together as a raft and kind of look like a raft. So um, that's kind of cool to see out in the wild if you ever get to see that. Awesome. Well, it looks like snack time's almost over for Lincoln. So thank you so much, uh, Nicole and Amy and Lincoln, for hanging out with us today. Thank you, you guys. We enjoyed having you on Facebook Live today. And um, continue to ask those questions. We have somebody online that can answer those for you. And thanks for spending time with Lincoln, our male sea otter. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.